Welcome to our Seminarian Chapel Chat for this Saturday, May 16th. Uh, we're going to be doing a little meditation today on John 15, 18 to 21. Christian, would you be willing to go ahead and read that for us? Absolutely. Okay, and so this gospel reading comes from John chapter 15. Jesus said to his disciples, If the world hates you, realize that it hated me first. If you belong to the world, the world would love its own. But because you do not belong to the world, and I have chosen you out of the world, the world hates you. Remember the word I spoke to you. No slave is greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will also keep yours. And they will do all these things to you on account of my name, because they do not know the one who sent me. So I think uh, my, when, I, when I was meditating on this first, the person that came to my mind um, is John's using the word, the, the, he says the world. So John talks about the world in two ways. Um, there's a, the good sense and the bad sense. So he talks about the world, and when he says that in a good sense, um, positively, he's talking about creation as something created by God, good, beautiful, and um, all the goodness present in creation. But when he talks about it in a negative sense, like here, he's uh, talking about creation in the way that it's been twisted by sin and its fallen state, right? Because we know that creation isn't, is it, not everything's all it's cracked up to be anymore because it's been broken by the first sin of pride, Adam and Eve. Um, and the, the the hatred that we experience as Christians um, is primarily because the world hated Jesus. All the world of sinfulness and corruption hates Jesus. And why does it hate him? It's because Jesus in the gospel, I was thinking about this, it makes demands on us, right? Um, because if you're all caught up in yourself, right, because sin is at its root is pride, if you're all focused on yourself and you don't want to have to listen to other people and you just want to do your own thing, you know, then when someone comes to you from outside and makes a demand on you and says, you need to change your life, you need to do something differently, you have two options. Either you can accept that you're messed up and broken and be, start to rely on this other person for advice, which means you're not relying on yourself anymore, and that's humility. Or you can reject the person and say, no, you're wrong. How dare you question me? How dare you tell me? And right, this is an obsession with yourself. I'm always right. I'm always got it handled. And Jesus in the gospel, in every age, in the uh, in every age, from when Jesus was first preaching to now when he's preaching through us, uh, it elicits it's a challenge to people. And there's going to be two responses: it is either a humility and a change of heart, or hatred and rejection. And that was was really sticking to me. It was, yeah. yeah. Those are good words. Um, for me, the when I read this gospel, I felt like it was a very consoling message to hear this. Um, and the reason I say that is because, you know, when we're doing the work of the Lord, like you were saying, we encounter people um, who, you know, don't necessarily believe in Jesus or what the church teaches. And um, they sort of, you know, they don't treat us so nicely or like what Christ says, the world hates you. Um, and so it's it's very consoling to hear that message because um, I know in my experience there was one time um, I was doing ministry in Ypsilanti one summer and we had to do door to door evangelization and this was near the end of the summer and so we've been doing this all summer and so I believe it was close to the last week and the last day we just me and this other young woman we just had the door slammed in our faces countless times. Um, just because we said we were from the Catholic Church down the road and we were just offering, you know, for prayers for people. If anybody had prayer requests and they, they one after the other, door was slammed on our face um, or people swore at us. And so it's just, it's so consoling to hear Christ say this because um, when you're doing his work um, for the Father, for him, you know, the world is not going to like it. You know, the world teaches you, like you're saying, the world teaches you that, the world thinks that it has everything to offer you, that everything is about your own pleasure, about your own gain. 
And the message of Christ is so radically the opposite. Mm -hmm. It's all about giving um, to others. It's about glorifying God and giving to God. And so it's so good to hear the Lord say this. Um, because when that does happen, it, it can bring you down so much, being rejected all the time and hated. But it's okay, because Christ told us this was going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, he said the world's not going to accept it. And it's so good because, it's, you know, the... It feels like the Lord is with you because, you know, the, Lord, the world rejected him and crucified him and he died for us and rose mm -hmm. again. And so, yeah, it was such a great, consoling message to hear that. And um, it, it just encourages you to keep going. Yeah, it really does. And I was, like, as you're, like, speaking about that, I was realizing um, we derive an intimacy. When we suffer with Jesus, there's an intimacy because, you know, it's like I say, it's better to suffer with a friend than to just rejoice alone. Because if you're all alone and you're rejoicing, it's like, what's the point of that? It's, there's not, it's not really fun when it's just you all alone and you have no one to share your joy with. But when you're in a relationship with someone, even suffering with them can actually be a, a source of kind of a deep fulfillment, even if it's not fun or pleasant. Um, and I think one of the important parts of this passage is also to recognize that uh, um, the world, a lot of people outside the church hate the church as well um, and hate the teachings of Jesus. But I think in our own hearts, there's this, some measure of hatred for Christ's teachings insofar as there's still things that we resist, right? So I, I, I love Christ and I want to follow him. But there's times when I'm listening to the gospel and it says, you know, pick up your cross and follow me. And there's some days where I just have this resistance in my heart. of I don't want to suffer right now. I just want to have all the pleasure. I don't want to have to deal with all the suffering. And we have to recognize there's areas of resistance in our heart where we're kind of tempted to say, no, I'm going to reject the message of Jesus. And when you reject someone, you're in a sense hating them, right? So in the question is, what places in our faith, in our belief, are we rejecting Jesus or resisting him? And I think the invitation in this passage is, instead of rejecting the word, um, is to keep the word. Uh, is to say, I'm going to accept the challenge that Christ offers to me and kind of come out of myself and not be prideful and kind of circled in on protecting my own um, way of life. Let him change you. I think that's an important message as we continue in this Easter season. Yeah, especially when it's coming to a close. Mm -hmm. um, certainly, you know, the last couple of weeks here leading up to Pentecost and or the Ascension in Pentecost, it's just such a great time to, you know, to dive more in, deeper into the relationship with God. Um, and especially, you know, in quarantine. Um, it seems like we're almost there. We're almost done with this quarantine. And so um, there's certainly going to be temptations, you know, like you're talking about, to resist the Lord's message. Um, but I think it's such a such a crucial time to just, you know, trust in God, trust in the Lord, um, that His plan... It's coming to fulfillment. The Holy Spirit is still guiding us, and He has not abandoned us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we're almost there. We're almost there. Two more weeks. <laughs> Two more. <laughs> yeah, God willing, we'll be out of this soon. So, yeah. let's end with a uh, prayer then. Absolutely. In the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus, we ask you to challenge us, because the gospel and love demand that we change ourselves, that we sacrifice ourselves for our beloved, for the other one who loves us and gives themselves for us. In this season, please show us the ways in which we aren't fully accepting the gospel, whether it's in our relationship with our family members, um, in our lack of trust in the midst of this difficult time, where Jesus asks us to pick up the cross and maybe we're rejecting that and choosing to put our hope into pleasure or into my own financial or material well-being. We ask you just to teach us how to trust your word, to trust the message of the gospel, and to let it change us, to not just stay stagnant, but to constantly be moving closer to the Father and to trust in him. And so we pray these words that we've been taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. St. Matthias, pray, pray for, for us. us. Thanks for joining us, guys.